week is brought to you by Combat Flip Flops. Bad for running and even worse for fighting, Combat Flip Flops are your ticket to the unarmed forces by providing you with the military-inspired quality footwear for men and women. Be sure to enter the code UNITY at checkout to help support the podcast. And in support of women in developing countries, head over to CombatFlipFlops.com and become part of their unarmed forces. Brought to you by Daisy May Hat Co., the custom hat company based in Nashville, Tennessee. They make custom one-of-a-kind hats from wide-brimmed fedoras to cowboy hats. All of their hats are 100% beaver felt, and it's the highest quality hat you can get. They also have the coolest shirts ever. You can use the code BRASS at checkout for 15% off your entire order. Go and check out daisymayhats.com. Embrace the fever. Live the dream. And brought to you by GFDA. Good fucking design advice. The voice in your head and the foot up your ass. GFDA makes prints, drinkware, and apparel for people who want to do their fucking best. Go and use the code UNITY and get 10% off now on anything on their site, including our collaborative product, Fucking Help Somebody. It's your fault. What, what's your my fault? It's I'm, your fault. That All of that, I should have just been recording all of that material. I should have. Well, it's, it's, it's lost for the ether for all eternity. Like, unless you were sitting here or outside my door, missed it, it all. It's over. It's over for me. But uh, I'm going to redeem myself because, well, I have the pasta empire <laughs> queen here. No, I have invader girl, Miss Sarah, the badass behind every single one of those incredible pieces of art on Instagram that every single person I seem to come in to contact with knows about has one or is proud to even say, Hey, have you seen this? It's so good. And it's because your art is off the charts. It's spectacular. It's emotional. It connects. It evokes something in people that most art really doesn't get to the, get to the heart of you're not Picasso. You're so much more. You evoke emotion of our time, of our generation, of our vets and our first responders, and you care. And I think the world needs to know kind of more of who you are. Oh, I just, I I think it's important, you know, like we, we live right now, you know, this is our history and, you know, eventually we will pass on. Like I don't have children. So, you know, when I'm gone, what I leave behind is this body of work and hopefully, um, you know, we can kind of build a bridge between different people. I like, um, I grew up working in a bar for 10 years and that's how I met everybody but also too it's kind of where I grew up like really grew up and that's you know during like the height of the GWAT era so everybody I met you know has done one or two deployments or more you know and yeah you just you just kind of learn a lot about life you know like really grabbing the edges of the universe and letting go of like the safe spaces and you know, I thought that was something that was really profound because it shaped how I see the world. And so, you know, long story short, the painting started happening, you know, just putting that on canvas to share or show or try to put something to an inexplainable thing and be like, here you go, you know, and give it back to the world and, you know, start building that bridge between really lost fucking people and people who maybe have a bit of an idea or something, you know, just, just to kind of bring humanity maybe back together. <laughs> There's so much to unpack there. You, so you worked. Pick one, let's go. Let's go. Let's hit it. You worked in a bar. How old were you when you started working in this bar? Uh, 18. So way back in the day, uh, you could bartend and drink at 18. So it was like, <laughs> and, and where are you from? Originally, I'm from Germany, but I spent most of my life in Guam. It's because a military family, right? Uh, so my dad was, and then my parents, uh, you know, got divorced, uh, I think when I was like 12 or something, and my mom moved us out to the island, and, you know, that's just kind of where I grew up. <laughs> No, I love it because you talk about working in a bar, so I'm trying to think, are you near bases that have a lot of, like, military so first responder? Uh, Guam is it might as well just be one massive base. It's a oh really? US I've never been there. I'm completely like naive to it. Super so sorry for Hawaii that. Hawaii, and then just shoot out into the ocean. Eventually, you'll hit something. Fantastic! I like yeah, it. It's super tiny. It's a beautiful place. Um, but you know, just so many different people come out through there. You know, from people who are active duty to contractors. I mean, just 
all walks of life you oh, know wow. a rusher there occasionally and you're like How the fuck oh dear you up out here <laughs> you know why i'm out here <laughs> yeah <laughs> falling out of the titty bar and you're like hello what okay fine he's it's not listening story. Yeah, I'd like to know that side story. I'd love to know that side story at some point. That sounds fantastic. Well, that's interesting, though, because 18, I mean, if you're being exposed to those types of conversations that early on, that must have shaped you quite significantly in the way that you think about the war as it went on. Well, just life in general. So, you know, at 18, you know, most of us are, you know, maybe angry little teenagers. We have no clue about the world outside. And then for some of us, you know, we either have already had a traumatic experience, we're, you know, trying to figure life out. There's so much going on right at that cusp, right? So Mm -hmm. now you're in the bar and you're just, for me personally, I was raging against the world. I just fucking hated everybody. Oh, you know, I I was like, oh, fucking um, shit, you know, trying to out drink 250 pound dudes. Never suggest that, but I tried. You know, and so at that time, too, I also had, you know, I lost somebody that was extremely close to me and it left such an impact because I lived in this little cherry bowl fantasy, like everything's great. And all of a sudden, you know, my life takes like a 180 and I don't know what to do with that. So I'm just angry. So now we, you know, end up in the bar and it's like, wait a minute. Why is like, who are these people like? how are they living life like this? You know, we've seen everything from, you know, memorial ceremonies to getting that phone call in the middle of the night to promotions to just the new team coming in, you know, and then handing them a Smirnoff ice and getting them way too drunk. (laughs) You know, just just everything. But on top of that too, these are people from all over the world with their own set of experiences and we've all collected here in this tiny place and you get to talk to them just unfiltered, nobody's this was before iphones existed so i think oh, we had fantastic. More open conversations <laughs> uh-huh. so you know it just I, that experience is is extremely unique you know and, and then you grow up with that you know for 10 years so you know 10 years of just growing up with all these people and you know me finally getting out of the bar and then just kind of seeing like the transition of you know, the last couple of years of, of the war and then, you know, the last huge events that we had and just the impact. It's just crazy, you know, and it's like, what what can I do with this? Like, my, I stayed in the bar for as long as I did because I thought that was the best way to help people because I wanted to give back because I had gotten so much. Mm-hmm. But you can't always do that with whiskey. <laughs> it helps, no. but doesn't go very far. Yeah, <laughs> I that and- the hard way. And it, and it often just leads to other issues, right? It's, it's never, uh, it's never a clear cut solution. It's often very complicated when you're dealing with complex trauma that most people are just constantly exposing themselves to and, and doing it on a repeat basis and such savagery, if that's even the word I'm looking for it, because (laughs) these guys that are doing that are coming and as contractors and going back and forth and they're, they're doing something different. Like there's a different level when you're talking to these SF guys as then you're talking to somebody that was like me. It's, 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 a, it's a different conversation. Most of these guys are like, I spent 400 and some odd hours on deploy, like ridiculous amounts of time. And I sit here and I always go like, Oh my God, like no wonder, no wonder people struggle. No wonder people turn to alcohol. No wonder it can help. It can numb it for a second, but that's never, uh, unfortunately it's never the solution for complex trauma. No, and you know, and I think the thing too is there isn't like a one solution fits all, um, Mm -hmm. which I think just has to be clearly said. For everybody, it's a little bit different. For everybody, things just click differently. You know, for me, I can put everything out on a canvas, and it's just like, oh fuck, all right, I'm good. You know, not going to go on a murdering spree today. (laughs) Oh good, (laughs) (laughs) kidding, totally kidding. You know, but uh, so you know, we, we need all these different outlets. And, and, and how do we find that? We find that by making the connections with different people, by sharing the story. And, and the big part is we have to fucking share that trauma, you know, or else Bob, Joe, and, you know, Robert can't learn from it because you're fucking hoarding it. And it's, 
it's hard to put that out. Absolutely. Like I don't run around and tell anybody, Oh, this happened to me, you know, because I don't want to, mm-hmm. I'm not a special snowflake, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people have that exact same viewpoint of like, I'm not telling nobody this shit. I'm fine. Fuck it. You know? Right. Yeah. And, and there's just so much shit on top of it. That it's like at the end of the day, you're like, you know what? Fuck it. Me and Jameson are going to go hang out and that's it. You know, just because, ah. Yeah. No, I, hey, I understand it. I think, I think there's everything in moderation. I think there is no one thing that can, I mean, there's no one thing that can hurt you like alcohol. It feels like, I mean, there's hard, hard drugs, but like alcohol is one of those other things. That's everything in moderation. Unfortunately, some people just can't moderate that. And it's not (laughs) like cannabis. Yeah. But it's not like it's (laughs) cannabis where you can, you can smoke as much weed as you can humanly take you're not going to, you're not going to die from it. You might just exactly. eat a significant amount of food or pass out. Um, but so, you know, I've always had that mixed relationship with alcohol. I had a beer this year. It's, it's a weird, I have a weird thing. Um, I know it can be, there is a cathartic aspect to it. I remember when you, when you lost a member or you were celebrating mm-hmm. someone there's this, you put a beer, like there's this thing about it. And so yeah. as, as hard as it is to get away from, it's still part of our culture in the first responder military, you know, trauma, if you will, it's all, it's part <laughs> of the culture. It feels like, so it's hard to separate for sure. Um, but it's fascinating to me to find out how you grew up for, for the most of your twenties, because, when you, I heard you say, you know, 18 were these angry little people. I was like, I was, I was going to war at 18. Shit. No <laughs> wonder I was so ready to go. I was so angry. I'm having like a therapy session here, Sarah. I appreciate yeah, you're you. welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be you get my whiskey. <laughs> I will send, uh, I will send you the bill. It's fine. Um, <laughs> right. But it's interesting because it seems to have shaped you. And I, and I wonder part of me wonders what that would have been like if you weren't exposed to all of those different types of people and situations, how that would have worked for you because to go from, you know, a steady job to then just to go to painting. I mean, was there a jump in between where you, you said, I want to, I want to become an entrepreneur. I want to be an artist. Was that the intent or was it really just about healing yourself? I think the big part was just healing. So, you know, towards the, a little bit of honesty towards the end of my time, you know, bartending, I was probably starting my night with a bottle of whiskey and ending okay. with like two or three, you know, so yeah, just every day, all day, just going down. And I don't think anybody really realized, which is kind of terrifying, but what's happening too, when you're consuming that much, it's like, I'm going fucking crazy, you know, and anybody who might still know me from that time would probably tell you I was out of my mind you know Mm -hmm. so how is that helping anybody like my biggest thing was I always felt I needed to be at the bar because I I need to be there for people because if not me who you know but I wasn't helping anybody anymore I was showing a fucking shit face you know I don't remember the night you know there there are nights where I'm like it's three o'clock in the morning what happened What, what happened to the day like my shift is over what (laughs) <laughs> yeah so I'm really I'm really good on autopilot um but art has always just been a thing that I've always done um and when 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 that all kind of collapsed and I'm, I made like a hard you know 360 I was like we're going in a totally different direction I closed out my apartment quit my job burned every bridge moved to the states on like a whim showed up with a backpack and was like okay I got a couple bucks saved up and where do we start? So, right. you know, first things first is like, okay, find a place. I had a few friends. So, you know, managed to secure a room, started renting a room. Next, find a job. What do I want to do? Not bartend, just not that, you know? So I just started applying for different things. I got, you know, a little part-time job and I was like, I'm just going to paint, you know? And it just kind of more shit came out and you know I started fucking around posting it on Instagram and you know I'm like I think what kind of happened unknowingly is I'm carrying 10 years of stories in my head you mm-hmm. know 
10 years of shit nobody's ever seen in a movie or read in a book, like personal shit. So it was like, blah, get that out, you know? And it was like, oh, this is actually quite cathartic, you know, putting out all this stuff that I've learned, that I've experienced with people through stories and whatnot. And just all of a sudden, you know, it's like, oh, this happened and this happened and this is going here. And all of a sudden I've got a mile long commission list, you know, I'm like, oh, this means something to people. And just the responses I've gotten, you know, the private messages and this and that and what it means to somebody being able to take this noise, the, the shit that nobody quite gets and put it out there and be like, look, this is what I'm talking about. Like, it's, you can't put, you know, like, ah, we all need that, you know, somebody just to see it and be like, oh, you fucking get it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now I can show everyone else. So. You know, that's, that's just a small piece of it. Like, not every painting is going to do that. I probably can't do it for every story. I mean, I'll try, you know. <laughs> so, one but day. It, it's, it seems like you're doing it just fine. Ah, well, you know, I've I, I got to paint like three or four pieces, you know. Like, I'm up against time. I'm like, I'll probably live to be like 100, 105 if I really push it. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. But isn't that what it is though? It's, it's cathartic. So it's healing. And I feel, I feel like the more you do this, the, the more you give yourself to it, I feel like the more it's going to heal you and just the, you're going to thrive the longer you do it. it. It fills you up because when you speak about it, the light that comes to your eyes is much different than when you speak of your past. It's a really interesting thing. If you're not watching it and you're just listening, I recommend watching because your, your expressions are fantastic because you're so genuine about what you speak at, about, which is your art, your love and how it's affecting people. I wonder, I wonder will you ever feel or have it start to feel obligatory? Do you worry of I, that happening? So, you know, a big part, you know, I'm, I've, I've, feel like it's the only way I can really say thank you to everybody I ever came across um you know I don't remember a lot of the names I half the faces are just blurs now uh, but like how do you take every service member and give them the biggest hug in the world and tell them you have literally saved my life I'm here today because of you and people like you like I short of me being creepy and running up to everybody and hugging them, you know, like I support this. I, excellent. All right. We're going to start the campaign. So Sarah's going to run around and just hug everyone. We're gonna be like, Ew, creepy girl. Get the no, we can off. film this. This will be fantastic. I bet I get punched at least twice, at least twice. Well, no, because um, what we'll do is we'll have somebody run behind you with a piece of your art that just said, this is who it is. And they're like, Oh, I know who that is. I'll, I'll hug her. It'll be fine. Yeah, so I, a lot of it really is just an attempt to say thank you. Like, you know, like really from here, like what you have done for me and what I am today, like ah, here. And like, I don't know how to do more. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, you know, we, we talk, my, my partner <laughs> who manages like the more complex side of the business. Um, right. I do we set up a nonprofit? Do we set up a, a, a ranch? Like, like what else can we do to like push back into it? And I, I don't know. I have no fucking idea. I'm making it up like any other entrepreneur is just like, fuck it, hit send and see what happens. You know, right. if you don't ask, you won't know. So, you know, this started as just, I will do this for as long as I possibly can, you know, until my fucking hands fall off and I've got little stumps, but then I'll probably paint like this. like. Yeah, paws on. <laughs> Start painting with my toes. Yeah. Hey, people buy paintings from an elephant. They will buy your toe paintings. <laughs> Don't you for a second think they would not buy those toe paintings? Don't go there with me. I'm going to do a toe painting after this, just, just because. If I don't see a toe painting by the end of tomorrow, I will reevaluate our newborn friendship. I want you to know it can be on a piece of paper this big, just a small square, but it better be a goddamn toe idea. painting. 
She's like, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I love it. Your eyes are just already there. You're like, can we end this now? I have things to yeah. do with my toes. Yeah, I, I'll, 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 we'll just start tomorrow. Call you later. Cool. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. Don't, don't stress about it at all. No, but your paintings are okay. So I'm, I am not a painter. I did art therapy via jewelry starting to think maybe I should have been a painter because it seems like there's more use in that than people wearing jewelry nowadays. So I think it's because during COVID people really started to realize like, what, what do I need? And then they're like, well, I'm not going out because I'm suffocatingly locked down. I don't need to wear jewelry. <laughs> I'll wear sweatpants. I should have went into the sweatpants industry. You should have went into sweatpants, blankets and Comfy socks? Yeah, comfy socks. I mean, they're literally anything else besides jewelry for COVID. But (laughs) it seems like, if anything, over the past couple of years, you've really, you've, I've at least seen like you've grown and you're thriving. And it seems like everywhere I turn, your people that I know, again, own your stuff. And not only do I see you just like doing this and doing commissions, but I know for a fact that you donate a lot of art for charity that then gets auctioned off and that's really selfless. And I think that's pretty great. I I think it's important, you know, like if you put something good out there, you'll get that in return, you know? And I I think too, not one charity or one person can save the world. You know, what, what we need is a multitude of fucking people to help everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. So if, if I, if I give organization a, a painting, that helps that group of people and B and C and D and E. So collectively I've reached out and helped as many people as possible versus trying to take it all on myself. You know, so it's kind of like sharing the load a little bit and mm-hmm. supporting other people that are doing great things, you know, instead of just being like, no, I only, I only talk to Bob, not you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I just think it's important to reach out and help. And that builds that connection with everybody. It builds the yeah. bridges back to each other. Like it, somewhere we all got super separated and super isolated. And I only do this. And it's like, uh, last time I checked, we're human. And we live on one fucking rock. So we better get the fuck along. You know? Well, you would or think. take it out back and fight it out. Like just a couple of I, God, I support this. You're, I love I'm gonna, that. I'm gonna try to open a bar in the next couple of years, just so I could, you know, set it we up. We can the have way a Fight Club. Yes. Okay, so we don't talk about Fight Club. We don't talk about Fight Club, but we do talk about. We'll have. Okay, can we have a separate painting room? Yeah. Can we just have like in the bar? There's like an art therapy painting room, and then in yes. the basement, there's a like a speakeasy and a Fight Club that turns into a Fight Club at two a.m. Just something obnoxious, but it's all like your art, and it's all like dark and very <laughs> military esque with like patches on the wall, and people are like, "What is yes. the vibe here?" Oh it's like God. it's <laughs> it's our community's art therapy place. Okay, we beat the shit out of each other, and we paint beautiful things. Yeah, and then you know we take a nursing class, and it's it's fine, you know. See, just everybody learns something. Exactly. I see you're going to help the world in so many different ways. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I tell, I jokingly tell everyone, but I'm halfway serious. Is everything we do is an art form? Everything, if Explain. you're willing. Ah, well, so you don't get good by art by just existing you have to practice hours of repetition and repetition and repetition it's like taking a gun apart putting it together and shooting it you do that over and over so you have these basic skills right you're like oh i know how to handle this fucking gun ttt right but then human nature the artistic side of it you start you know manipulating it a little bit differently you pull it out of the holster differently than i would or bob or anybody you know so that's the art in it and how you do it and you constantly put yourself into that the art same thing like there's basic rules you put paint on canvas cool now how you do that that's the art form cooking driving walking dressing talking like fucking like all of it (laughs) there's an art art forms man yeah and just about everything making drinks you know um so yeah, I don't know. I think everything has a little bit of art in it. So anybody that says, oh, I'm not an artist, smack them across the face and be like, no, no, you are. You just 
haven't realized what you want to be an artist in. <laughs> ah, so it's about it, there. There's art and beauty in all things. It's about narrowing down your specific medium. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for some it's talking. For some it's I don't know housewives, right? That that's an art form all on its own. Um, sure. Postman, I anything. Fuck, literally. You know. Well, I think it's also about in in art too, and and. I think the the aspects you're talking about when it comes to everything being art and art form really rally around about really rally around the idea of caring deeply about something and Mm -hmm. what that means to become exactly the passion, what it means to become good at something. So it, it's an art form. Everything's an art form in the truest form. It's about how much you care about each piece of art is whether it's your job if you find like you said if you're a postman and you find you find it therapeutic and it's almost it's the word I'm looking for it's almost um I don't know have you ever seen a mailman run like the way they walk the pace they walk and the way they move their mannerisms it's a there's a it's like a dance like they're they they have this pace and they're this way and they're click they boom they thought and next and there's this just passion. And I feel like it, you're right. It's, there is art in so many things. Yeah. Cause we call dance art. So why wouldn't walking or how I put together an instrument, like, or how I, you know, so I used to do auto body, like how I take a car apart or put it back together. It, it's all art, you know, and maybe too, that's kind of the beautiful thing about art pieces. So many people are like, oh, I wish I could do art. And it's like, you literally can Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be paint on canvas it can be a sculpture it can be how you read a fucking book it can be the meal you make that's that's the passion right fucking passion into it and at the end of the day you start putting more passion into to your day-to-day life you know you you enjoy the sunrise you enjoy you know your morning cup of coffee you know like your cigarette just tastes so much better you know right that was a big thing too when i when i you know, made that hard change. Like I probably didn't drink for the first year. I think I maybe had a couple of beers, but every morning I made it a point. I was up before the sun to watch the sunrise. I sat and had coffee, breakfast, like whether I was feeling it or not, I got the fuck up, you know, and mm-hmm. just kind of had this really basic routine, but you know, I put what I had into it while I kind of recovered and healed from everything. It's just like, it seeped out into everything else, you know? And so anybody who says they're not an artist, you tell them that I said they are. It's interesting. <laughs> there. I I like, I love that though, because it's funny that the way you describe art, it, when I, when you say the word art, like you said, I think I kind of run about way kind of came to like, that really just means passion to me. Like it really is about being passionate and caring about what you do and putting the effort into things and there is art in all of that and that's a that's a beautiful way to put it and I think I appreciate your level of violence like you 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 just want to go like if they don't like it just please beat the shit out of them (laughs) I just I thought that was only my characteristic where I'm just too much no I will I grew up in a bar with a bunch of dudes so like a bunch of giant brothers and when I got out of line boy did I get it um, I was like, oh, I can't breathe. Oh, okay, I'll go oh. get your Budweiser. I'll be back. <laughs> this is fine. This feels like a normal behavior. Let me just go yeah. grab you a drink now. That's great. Um, um, but it's a simplified, you know, way to live. You know, it just, it cuts all the fat and fluff off and it just gets you back down to humanity and just being good people. Mm-hmm. Ah, man. Yeah, no, I'm I like get it. Flashbacks to like oh, all geez. the good days, like, oh man. Mm. <laughs> but it, that's great to be able to look back at your past in and look at it in such a like you light up again. Like there's the way you're like, ah, oh, like these moments, like you smile so deeply because <laughs> it's nice to be able to look back and have a past like that rather than looking at some of the things that you suffered kind of before you worked in the bar and and really the alcohol side, you're able to see the purpose and the happiness that could come out of that. Like you chose to look at the light, which is really, really fantastic because most people, everyone wants to be the victim. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's a choice. Like we we can choose to fucking wake up and be like, oh, fuck the world. Or we can choose to wake up 
say fuck the world, but I really like that sunrise, you know, and it just kind of, it grows more like we can fucking choose, you know, so yeah, okay, life sucks, you know, ooh, special fucking snowflake, oh darn, you know, something bad happened, you know, I'm not trying to downplay it, but you're not the only one, you know, and really how, how shitty is your life compared to everybody else, you know, like, Mm-hmm. I've got running water and a toilet to shit in, so I'm doing great. Winning. Yeah. Well, no, I know it's interesting to um to bring that up because uh, the way people look at life anymore, it's it's been it's been a weird like past five <laughs> to ten years, uh, just for humanity to watch the the wokeness and then the you know the, yeah. the Burning down I'm surprised and... we're not all alcoholics. Like, oh, kind of should start drinking now. <laughs> I mean, I feel like most are. They're just closet. Like, let's be honest. At this point, if it's not alcohol, there's there's so many other means. I mean, for me, it was about. I was I was so down on this world. It was like I had to find my own version of God real real quick, and luckily I did. So that's great. <laughs> so psychedelics now are that, and I that's I, hey, we all find our way to cope, and that was interesting <laughs> because you you and I kind of were chatting at the beginning of this about um, how we how we knew what, well, how I knew about you and everything like that. And turns out shocker. Oh, Griff, like everybody I've connected with, it's like, Hey, you, you know, Griff. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, Griff. It's like this guy, he's like the wise old, um, like elf that sits in the center and he's like, let me pull all of my friends. Everybody will talk now. Do, 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 do. Yeah. yeah. But that's, that's the beautiful thing about it is like, we're building this massive connection of people you know, it's essentially just really awesome, good, positive connections and mm-hmm. bringing everyone up and out and together. And it's like, we can do more of that. Right. Or more. <laughs> right? Isn't that terrifying? We have the power to grow <laughs> the networks. <laughs> we do. But, you know, from that, it, it should be inspiring and motivating. Like, you mm-hmm. do your thing. I do mine. Griff does his. And everyone else that's Part of that it's like at some point we'll all cross paths but we're all building this amazing network and it's like it's just bring us all a little bit back together you know short of like aliens invading earth let's just do it on our own term you know maybe do you want to talk about aliens do it let's talk sure. about aliens for a second okay how do you feel about aliens they're coming they are <laughs> no they probably don't even want to be here. They like fly by and they're like, fuck that place. I mean, they're coming and my husband cannot wait. Maybe He's... they're already here. Okay, they probably are. Like, let's be honest with ourselves. But like, <laughs> he's like, abduct me. Like, let's go. I'm like, can we not? Don't don't say things like that to the world because I don't want to wake up to a little green man or gray or whatever they're called <laughs> nowadays sitting at the Poking end of my you, like, hmm. Mm, mm. he called for us no i'm not here for it don't i want the invasion to happen. that guy called yeah that guy called i want the invasion to happen and i want nothing to do with it that's terrifying i don't know how you feel but i legitimately well i i actually there's no way in hell that we are alone like let's we're past that point i think it has to be impossible like really we're the only living thing bullshit cute there's and if we are that's terrifying too like there's, there's nothing just, else out there. There's just no way. There's just no way. I mean, I can't, I can't picture it. I I feel like we would be naive to think that we're, we're not that special. I mean, we're special, but like, are we that special? Well, some people would argue that we are very special. Oh dear. <laughs> oh God. But that's an outside podcast conversation. Right. But that's the thing is I'm curious because some people, when you talk to them about aliens and, and like and the sophistication of the technology behind it, people genuinely panic. Yeah, well, we should panic. And if anything, maybe that should motivate us to get our fucking heads out of our asses and stop worrying about shit that doesn't fucking matter. And I don't know, let's get our shit together. Let's just be a better collective and. Oh. Do you think, do you think that we're going to pull out of this in a way 
Do you, what are the, okay. Try, let me try this again. Do you, what are the positives pulling out of this? Cause I know for you during COVID and all of this disaster, you've just been painting, you've just been head down and painting. So has this affected you at all or has business gotten better? I love being just to- like, so I spent a lot of time just kind of, I, I prefer to paint. I honestly do. Like, it, you know, and it goes back to, so when somebody shares something, I see it. And if I don't produce, it creates like a backup and a anxiety and ah. So it'll happen sometimes where like, I'll get a message late at night and I have to get up and paint. I'm just going to go do it. Cause I have to, cause I saw it like, Everybody stopped. I'm working. <laughs> um, yeah, so with COVID, I mean, there was really no big change. I just was happy to be in my own little world. I got everything delivered to the house and just cranked out pieces and did what I got to do. And, you know, it, it's nice now because things are starting to open up. So this year, like, I'll be attending a couple different galas and hopefully some more fundraisers and actually be there in person so people can put a face to, like, I know it's so, so awesome. You just need to take a big picture of yourself and put it on your Instagram. And then everybody will be like, you have to do it. So then people know who they're walking up to meet. No, that's half the fun. Like, I just want to be like that person who's walking around in the crowd and just listen to everybody, you know, talk about the artwork. And I'll be like, hee hee, I'm right behind you. <laughs> that's so creepy, I know. Jokes, uh, jokes on you. That's not going to happen anymore. So. I mean, I you, this? you really didn't think this through. I thought we had this conversation. You're going to, oh, people are going to know. Oh no. It's right, too now late. Nobody's going to know. It's so too late. You're like, you cover your eyes. If I can't see you, you can't see me. <laughs> Doesn't work that way, dear. Exactly. Shit. Something like that. It's going to be exciting to see that though for you. I mean, that's going to be a whole new world of exposure in terms of you having to be like, hi, I actually this- made this. <laughs> I mean I've I, always had like the bar to hide behind you know so that was always kind of nice and you know I, I, fuck, I didn't sell that many pieces back then because I didn't put that many up and half the time I would lie and be like oh yeah the artist isn't in <laughs> I just, just okay. I don't know so I'm really shy apparently I guess I, I don't know I, for me it's not about like the uh, you know the artist like like I sign it super small. I don't even sign my name. My site is set of numbers. Like the art should be the focus point and the story behind it and you know how it's impacted someone's life and brought some closure to them or you know reshaped their perspective. You know, so like with some of the pieces, um, you know, all that noise and you know, whatever you want to label it, trauma, good, bad, whatever, like letting it out and letting it go into something else is maybe a way to filter it you know like with psychedelics they're doing you know magic to people too i'm i'm allergic to all kinds of drugs so i'm not super open to trying psychedelics because i'm like i'm pretty sure i just run on naturally high anyways oh okay (laughs) so you know i mean you should see the shit i see in my head on a daily basis it's like i mean start drinking now I want to, I'd be curious to see the type of art you would put out if it were maybe not that. I'd be curious to see you do some other styles because I want to see what's inside your head. I'm fascinated. I'm curious. I really do. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. There's, yeah. there's one painting that I have hoarded that I, I'll never sell that I would say is a pretty accurate description of just kind of like how I perceive the world a little bit I guess maybe oh I need to see this it's tucked away I'll have to go dig it out and look at it. <laughs> you will have to send me a picture of it I, I'll keep it private sorry everyone uh sorry for your loss I I need to uh I need to see this because I feel like you think very differently like when you say that somebody gives you an experience they tell you about an experience and then you see it in your head so you're incredibly empathetic or that mm-hmm. wouldn't be so that's a that's a weight in itself. I wonder, was that like that for you always when you were young too? Because if you came from a military family, was that was there a uh, component of growing up in the military and 
having experiences with family like that, that made you more of an empathetic person? I think so. Um, I mean, I would say our childhood was kind of, you know, we weren't allowed to go out a whole lot and blah, blah, blah. So I, I don't think really got exposed to the world mm. and, you know, until, yeah, my parents divorced and, you know, it's like, mom's not home. I'm going to steal the car. Oh, well, we're going full <laughs> tilt immediately. We're not even being like, I'm going to sneak a beer. It's like, I'm stealing a vehicle. The first chance yeah. I get. <laughs> Pretty much. Like, I mean, cause you know, we kind of lived in this like beautiful little bubble. And then all of a sudden it was like doors wide open. And I was like, <gasps> your eyes change so much when you say that. <laughs> bubble well, you know, yeah, here I go out into the world. I have no fucking experience like other kids did, you know, maybe sneaking a beer here and there. I'm just out there, full bore, face in the dirt, you know, <laughs> literally and figuratively. Um, yeah, that's just kind of what I grew up with. And then all of a sudden, 18, I'm in the bar, you know, and it's like, bam! I was like, whoa! <laughs> That's so wild to me though, being growing up where you did, that's such a unique, um, it's a unique upbringing. It's different than most people being what they'd normally be exposed to. It's not something I was ever exposed to. So I don't know that, uh, I mean, I, I can pretty naive in my teenage years. Like I had, I had no idea what drugs were until it was like, Oh, Oh, I, I actually can't smoke weed because it fucks me. <laughs> so... Oh, <laughs> Just, you know, hugging the toilet, puking my guts out for all eternity, you know. And trust me, I've tried every other way, like, you know, doing the edibles or just like a little hit or it doesn't matter. Like, just my body will not take it. Um, yeah, so that that was me trying to figure out the world, you know, but I was like kind of behind <laughs> compared to everybody. So, and then on top of that, like, I can, you know, I, it's weird to describe like when you're an empath like sometimes you start having memories that aren't really yours because it gets all muddled up and shit like it's uh, it's creepy that's why the art was really helpful because it was like we can get this shit out somehow <laughs> so, how, how was that for you when you when that first started happening explain that to me good feeling well, other people's emotions and memories like explain that to me what that was like the first time that happened uh a wait you know and you start thinking oh, fuck, I've got to be crazy like nobody's gonna believe me nobody's nobody's gonna think that like I can see that right like there's a painting I did a few years ago and it's based on a very loose story and I was like I fucking see it right so I produce the piece and I show it to the person and the look on their face of, are you there? How the fuck would you know? What? You know, like, how would anybody know that? It's an educated guess I, mm -hmm. or I just good or I, I, I don't fucking know, but there you go. You're not the only person that stood there. Apparently I can see it too. I don't know how, but there you go. <laughs> And it's, it's, why, it's why it has to come out, you know, like, it, you know, like the work, there, there's some heavier pieces that I do. So not all the work yeah, you is think? posted. Yeah. <laughs> there's, so I actually have like a whole blacklist of pieces that will never see the internet at all. Um, just client requests. Never. Sorry. <laughs> Nobody. Oh I'm sorry. If we were like married and fucking maybe, but. Oh Other man, that, no, sorry. God damn it. <laughs> Tell your husband, sorry, you're out. Right? Thanks. I, I'm sorry. I need to see some art. There's some art that needs to be looked at clearly. I'm divorcing you. I'm sorry. No, I'm kidding. No, but, um, like there was a piece that I did. I got a request and, you know, it was, I had gotten an email in the middle of the night and I was like, I gotta go paint this because I was like, I fucking see this so hard. It needs to happen, right? I crank out this piece, send them a picture, and they're like, I haven't even responded back to you. How the fuck did you do that so fast? And it was like, I don't know. I just, I know it needed to happen. There you go. You know, and the creepy part, I guess, maybe behind it is like the whole time, it's like I could feel 
the other person that no longer exists in this plane of the universe being like, do this now. It's like, yes, messed up. <laughs> oh, so you, you got, you got the, you got the people talking on the other side, huh? Sometimes I, I'll jokingly tell everybody the dead are very, very demanding and they don't sleep. Like there's <laughs> sometimes you just, that was, that was pain. I'll be back. <laughs> that, um, that painting. Right, I was now talking. everybody knows I'm crazy. No, you're not crazy. <laughs> you're not crazy. Nobody thinks you're crazy. Don't you dare assume that I won't, I won't allow that. I won't allow you to talk about yourself that way. I won't. There is no, there's, there's <laughs> too much in that. That's hard. No, the, 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 we don't, you don't have to say which one either. Um, but the picture that we were discussing before I said that I was like, Oh, there was this thing when I was young and if, uh, like, was that a similar situation? Yeah. It's just interesting. You just paint it like that. And it's funny because, you know, then all of a sudden you're like, Oh yeah, we're going to do this interview. And it's, and then you tell me that story. And it's like, that's really funny. Cause it's right there. I know it freaked me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's kind of the, it, you know, it, you know, just take away all the ghost stories and just go back down to like the world consists of energy, right? And correct. Supposedly, positive attracts positive. If we open ourselves up, we, you know, attract X, Y, and Z. And it's like, maybe that's just kind of what I do it's like I'll just paint shit that attracts or people put shit out and then all of a sudden it becomes a painting I don't find it but there you go mm -hmm. there's a loose explanation it's very sciencey <laughs> I like the sciencey this is fantastic it's, somebody it's, get Neil deGrasse Tyson on the line damn it well clearly well Jesus I should have made the calls before the show the <laughs> the interesting thing though to me about some of your paintings are is they are they're dark but they're cathartic it's it's hard to it's hard to express you have some stuff where people are just straight exploding and you're you have i don't know oh. oh, so think, think of it like this a person is in a dark place and now all of a sudden another person comes into this dark place and like turns on a light mm -hmm. You know, like there, there is kind of that catharticism in that. So, it, you know, it, again, goes back to how do I say thank you to people who literally turned on the light for me? Well, I'll go back in there and turn on the light. You know, and that, that's that's a loose description of what, what's kind of happening. You know, like that's why all the pieces start as black because you're trying to pull, you know, this light out from the dark. You're trying to make sense of something that doesn't make sense. You know, like. Ask somebody what it's like to get shot or blown up or this or that. There's so much going on, you right. know, and I mean, sometimes your mind just can't articulate it inside. So what do you do? Take it, take it out, take it out, put it on something. Now I can look at it, you know, and then maybe digest it a little bit better. Maybe I can put some fucking words to it, or maybe I can show the rest of the world and they can stop just being cock bags and be like, Oh, Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> doesn't all have to be pretty fucking flowers and horses, you know? It's like, yeah, that's 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 some hood rat shit right there. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's needed though. Yeah, well, because it's a real part of the world, you know. We've got we've got generations of kids who don't know what it means hard labor or to struggle or anything. I mean. Ah, ooh, I'm gonna go on a tangent that could go yeah, real hit bad. Me. Hit me with that. No, go ahead. <laughs> you, yeah. you, you say whatever you feel like you need to say. You are welcome. I, I think you know we have we have a section of humanity who has experienced hardship and extremes, and they know what hard labor is, and they know what it means to be proud of putting all they've got into something. And then you've got another section that is oblivious as fuck, like. Kids who can't open a case of Coke, like that's a bit of cardboard. You just put a little pressure on it and pop it open. It's not that fucking hot. Oh my God, you're alive. That's and you breed. Oh, we're so fucked. We know the aliens coming. Like I will literally just line you all up. Here you go. Free iPhones. 
be. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There, there has to be something wrong in the world when, when, when the homeless person has a better iPhone than the person who's working. You know, like that. What? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot going on, especially in the fa- you know in the past few years with. Um, it just it's like a disconnect that doesn't make sense and it's like oh god yeah there's this um <laughs> distribution of of wealth and it's a very interesting concept because you have people who are working multiple jobs and still on food stamps like you mm-hmm. it's, it's it there's something backwards about the way we're thinking um <laughs> it, it's it and it comes down to just um we don't uh we don't want to hurt anyone's feelings so we don't want to make anybody feel like they're not doing enough or we don't want to make anybody feel bad for their life. But, but you know, this is what, what do you expect when you just don't make anybody accountable for anything? And I think you should make people accountable. It's the same with the, the victim mentality. Like you can choose to be a victim or do something about it, but somewhere, somehow we just, some people decide that and some people decide that. And it's like, okay, cool. Well, if you want to do that, do you, you know, I'm, mm. I'm not going to force anything on you, but leave me the fuck alone. How about that? <laughs> Give me that iPhone. I'm out. <laughs> I feel like you could live in the woods just fine. I would. It'd be all right. <laughs> I'm running around like... naked with torches and shit and little like tiki heads. But People you can like, paint them. Is that a girl? But you <laughs> can paint them. You just be in the corner painting. It'll be fine. Everyone will accept <laughs> it. You'll be the artist of the colony. It'll be fine. Now we're talking about cult level shit. I love this. Yeah, we are. It's fine. It's going to get weird real quick. So what's the, like, over COVID, what are you doing? Or what do you do besides painting? What are the other things that you do for your mental health? Because clearly it sounds like you're, you deal with a lot of your own stuff, but you also, you take on Routine. everybody else's pain. So there's got to be something you're doing. Routine. So, you know, first thing in the morning, coffee, breakfast, nothing else, and then gym. And nothing else can occur until that, you know, getting, you know, seven to eight hours of sleep too, whether I'm tired or not. Um, eating healthy, like I I eat organic. I know it's so fancy. But it's it, it's just trying to, you know, have a little bit more control of like the shit that I'm taking in. So okay. not ingesting more chemicals, you know, cause I do smoke. Uh, I do drink a shit ton of coffee and I do like a fucking glass of whiskey. Cause I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to live forever. And I'm not going to let the fact that I used to drink a shit ton ruin me. You know, mm-hmm. I'm going to enjoy my goddamn life. <laughs> um, yeah, just, and then too, just surrounding myself with good people, people that I feel like I feel like I need to turn the light on. It's getting dark in here. It did get a little <laughs> dark in there. <laughs> yeah, the sun's like disappearing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I would say routine, eating good, gym, you know, like I, I'm not like obsessed with the gym, but you know, some squats, some deadlifts, some some sort of fucking cardio, the rower. I have a rower on that tiny little patio. It fucking sucks. Perfect. I bashed my head on the bar a few times. <laughs> but you did it. I did it. I got it done. You know, and and then too, just the work. So like as much shit as I do take in from the different stories, like I have to paint too. Like it's such a, if I'm not working, I feel really weird. I'm like, I didn't do anything. Uh... Is there any other medium that works for you? Like, do you write at all? I used to write a lot. I haven't done it. I read too it's like my favorite thing as well movies every now and then but I mean if everyone disappeared you know like if I was just like locked in my own room with paint supplies I'd be super content I'd be like coffee paint bed (laughs) you could go to prison just fine (laughs) I mean besides the not getting laid part I'd be like "Eh, that kind of blows can I get a beer no fuck (laughs) Well, I, I found the only downfall then, I suppose. Yeah, well, it's okay. I'll, you know, maybe make friends with the guards and be like, hey, can you just like slide the beer in, please? And I'll a do penis. a painting. Slide. Yeah. <laughs> just throw one in. Like, just toss it in. <laughs> toss. I'm painting. What about it's the fine. guard over there? He's kind of cute. Hey, what's up? That's perfect. 
Gosh, I oh love it. Oh my god, it. I'm terrible. People are gonna no, be like, I, the I, I, no, I love it. It's like you can tell you were either in the military or you've been around the military because you are you are <laughs> perfection. Oh yes, you know, nine nine. No, yes. you're open and you're honest and you're truthful and you 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 speak from can you speak with conviction and from the heart and it's 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 great and that's why I think it doesn't matter what you say when you joke around like that because it's people <laughs> can see you're just uh you're so full of light and there's so much positivity coming out of you you can get away with being like <laughs> here it I is. can get away with a lot <laughs> <laughs> I love that that's so fantastic what's the what's the like next step what's the goal what like if you could if you could have one major goal for your art, if you could have one big, this is where I want to go. Uh, oh, I don't know. I mean, I, okay. So I jokingly want to be the first artist to launch a painting into outer space. Like I want to bypass shows and museums and just put one in outer space. So if anybody knows Elon Musk, let him know that, I want to launch one out in the outer okay. space. <laughs> okay. Hey. That's like my way the not, fuck out there dream. Not not achievable. It's possible. Yeah. Totally. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't see then, why not. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, hey, can you put that in space? I mean, he put a roadster in space. Yeah. So I feel like, I feel like art is about it. Art is also like humanity. It's kind of like when they sent that big disc out there, like way back when it was like stuff and there was like music on it. It was cultural types of information. I think art falls in that category. So, I mean, technically. And how cool would it be just floating around the globe? I mean, I'm here for it. The biggest fuck you to the (laughs) art world. I don't need what your I shows think... or museums. I'm going to space. Do you want your stuff in shows and museums? Yes and no. Uh, at the end of the day, that's I, I don't care about that. You know? No, take that. Take that. Like, forget that side. I'm saying, like, from a success perspective, do you want to see something like that where it's your name? above it and it's all about you and people are just walking around with red stickers i mean if it happens cool but no because you know what i just build my own fucking museum i mean i'm for that as well (laughs) with the bar and the fight club yes i I don't know like i've got a million different ideas you know like do do we start a, a little cafe and then I can reach out to other, you know, because like I started collecting veteran art and this stuff is just oh so goddamn good. And it's like, why aren't more people doing this for fuck's sake? Like, mm-hmm. god damn it, get on board. Cause I can't paint all the stories. Like I'm trying, you know, three, four pieces a day, and it's like we need more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I know there's more out there because I've seen it. Right. <laughs> um I have no idea. I mean, it's, I just kind of threw it out into the universe part. I didn't try to overly define it. I, I, you know, cause I think that leaves it more open, you know, from, you know, being able to donate work to different books, to different people, to different charities, to just all sorts of shit. I didn't even think of where I was like, wait, you want art? Well, that's awesome, you know, and it just, you have no idea where it's going to go. So it's like, I think if you overly define it, it just kind of takes away from where you can go. So I don't really have it planned just yet. I, well, hey, it's not a bad answer. It seems like you have a direction. You just want it to thrive. You, it seems like the, the real answer is it doesn't matter. It's not what it's about for you. And that, and that's more than fine. You don't have to have a defined answer. I think that's where, like you said, people put themselves in a box or in a bubble and they don't achieve that. There's some kind of downside to that. But I believe that if you leave yourself open, like you said, the world, the universe will kind of connect what needs to be connected and things thrive off of that. Yeah. And it's amazing just to see the people that have reached out and gotten pieces and, you know, where the pieces have even gone, you know, like 
trying to get one on every continent or every country. And, you know, it's, there's just some really awesome stories. Most of them I can't share, but, you know, like, God, it, it's just amazing. And all because by not over defining it, just being like, fuck it, uh, art, uh, let's go. Right. <laughs> that's great i love that i love that it's like, it's yeah go for it you're here. getting very dark but it's <laughs> it's interesting to see the way you you view growth because i think that's why you'll end up being successful because you see it as it doesn't have to be this one direction it can be just helping others in healing and that itself is, you know, defined success a little bit for you as well. I mean, when you're getting commissions and things like this, is there anything that you've ever said, no, I can't paint that? Oh, I've, I've definitely failed on pieces. It happens. You know, sometimes people will describe something and I'm like, I don't know if I can do that, but I'm willing to try because, you know, again, growing up with, you know, all these brothers who don't quit, you know, mm-hmm. pussy. And I'm just like, fuck you, faggot. <laughs> it happens. Oh, there we go. You know, so I'm always willing to try. Doesn't mean I nail it. So I have failed quite a few times. Um, but it, it's a learning experience because it's like, like I can't really paint fire, fire, like sort of. I can sort of ish do it, but not all of it. And so, like, there was a commission where there was fire. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I just, I can't. <laughs> My hand doesn't do it. <laughs> Use the strong hand. Just grab it. Just grab it. I love it. that you know that. I love that you know that reference because I said that reference on the Mental Health Monday yesterday about people having a strong hand from a scary movie. And I was really devastated. And then one guy on the live was like, scary movie too, huh? And I was like, it's too late. Oh, just at the moment. Just leave me hanging. Just let leave me hang inside. Oh, it was so good though. I was so glad that you got that reference. That that makes me uh, even happier. <laughs> yes, God, you guys, if you're not watching this, you really you should have just watched it instead of listened to it because there's an epic Weirdos. painting. Yeah, yeah, losers. And there's an epic painting behind you though. Who's this yes. guy? Uh, so. I had somebody just kind of like loosely throw an idea at me. Um, I actually haven't told them that I'm working on it. So okay, cool. just for fun, I was like, I'm going to put it in the background because in case they watch it, they'll be like, wait a minute, that's my fucking painting. Let's look. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you're yeah. going to have to tell me afterwards who it is. I won't say it to anybody, but I want to know who it's for. <laughs> Your mom. Oh, whoa, ruthless. <laughs> she hit me with it. Oh, my God. Sorry. I'm addicted to your mom jokes. I'm so bad. Like if, we went out to dinner, like a professional dinner, and I oh feel man, like your so. eyes and your your quotations really struggle there when you say the word professional. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Well, it's, it's like I have the hardest time trying to be like, mm, yeah, because so, so, mm-hmm. all I'm thinking is your mom sits on your face. What? Oh my goodness, that's the best. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Like, like if I could have like a little tape recording of the shit that's going through my head while I'm having, you know, serious conversations. I know, but can you imagine how great of like an audiobook that would make or like just little gifts or like little weird NFTs where you just you just see an image of one of your paintings and it just says your mom. And <laughs> but and that's like the back end of the NFT. It's like you buy the image and then you you press the token and yours actually has like a hidden your mom in all of the paintings. Oh. I mean, I just threw a great NFT idea at you. I'm just saying. Yeah, well, you know what? You go ahead and hold on to that one because that is stunning because I'm not that tech savvy with like the whole NFT thing. I'm like, hey, that sounds like a great idea. But I don't understand any of it. What? I, I, you know what? I don't, um, I don't understand any of it. What I did learn is that apparently, sorry, my hair is driving me nuts. I have too much. Um, Apparently. Talk it off. I ain't got none. Oh, I've had (laughs) no hair before. Yeah, you don't have any hair. Why do you always wear a toque? That looks awesome. I don't know. I like covering it up. It's why? Oh my god, it's a completely different person. You're a completely (laughs) different human being. What even just happened? (laughs) I have transformed. 
<laughs> you literally, you're like, I'm an artist. And then you're like, hi, I'm a super hot artist. <laughs> Three quarters of the way through the show. I love that. That's fantastic. You're like, actually, you're this like, is fuck, the other fuck, me. Fuck. Yeah, it's, you, this, you did it to yourself. Um, you... That's completely, you look completely different. This drastic change. I'm sorry. I'm very shocked by that. The, um, I planned it, the whole thing. Stage. That's what that was. That was your plan. <laughs> Damn it. I, even, I lost track of thought. That's how, thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. Got you. Okay, great. Fantastic. So I'm what wearing you, pants just to let you know. Like I have pants on. We're good. Oh, well, I mean, nobody would have, I mean, you're at home and nobody would have expected you to wear pants. If it makes you feel any better, I've had an individual on the show undo his pants because he had to pee so bad, but yet he didn't know that I could see the camera as he undid them. His name is Spencer Kirksey. He's the host of the Potty Mouth podcast. I call him uh, regularly on it because it did happen and I didn't edit it out and it is on the YouTube. So I really suggest going to watch it. And then I uh, called him yeah. out and he said, oh, you can see that? And so... Like it's great. It's fine. It was a distraction like as well. Oh, so ridiculous. But no, I ask about these paintings because you you have all different sizes. And what what dictates when somebody like tells you a story, what how do you start with that? Because I see that you don't paint with a brush, like traditional brushwork. Like you do these videos of you, which are really great. And I think you should do way more of, of you actually doing it because they're really great. Yeah. I'm trying to help you here. I think they make really Fine. great reels and stuff. And I think they're great to watch because it shows your process. And there's something about being able to be involved and in seeing someone's process that brings you closer to the art. And so yes. I wonder oh. about that technique and why you do it and why not like a, just a traditional style painting. I mean, sometimes brushes, but for the most part, it's just. just yeah. A tiny little palette knife that does all these pieces. It, I don't know. User preference really at the end of the day. Why, why do some people, you know, prefer this gun over that gun? Fucking user preference. You know? Fair, fair. But I, I do wonder because your art is so uh, unique that is it now that you've kind of got a decent following going and that that is, seems to be the type of art that you predominantly do. Do you worry that that's you can't move within and out of that style? Uh, I've thought about it a few times, like if that's mm -hmm. going to be kind of like a handicapping issue, but I started painting trees. You did start painting trees. And apparently people really fucking like them. Like, really like them. And so it's like, okay, you know, we can get away with murder. Oh. <laughs> Again, your face. <laughs> you just paint your face. <laughs> I have painted my face a couple of times. There is no. an epic, epic nude painting that I did. And it's actually of me. Most people don't know that. And it's in Canada somewhere. Oh, I will find yes. this. <laughs> I'm going to find out. You, I mean, because I could see you doing like large scale, that those types of paintings, those oh, more so provocative. So um, I think the big problem too is I'm kind of limited on space. Like I work in an eight by 10 room, Okay. you know, so I can't do all the big ones that I want to do. Um and then two, you know, shipping the pieces. So I pack and ship all the pieces and trying to make sure that they're not getting destroyed or this or that, or, you know, just mm -hmm. trying to offer a product at an okay price for people so that everyone can get one, you know, like, so there's a lot of things that go into that, but I, I think too, at some point I just had to decide on like four or five sizes and be like, okay, this is what we're doing. Else I would have everything because I would have seven foot canvases and be like ha -ha! <laughs> what do I do with it because I live in a tiny apartment so when I get my big massive studio I'll be like I do seven foot paintings what's up <laughs> your eyes <laughs> are like yeah that's right I know I'm a big deal like that's what that look of <laughs> was like I am that good I can do a seven foot painting I mean I'll try shit I might fuck it up but you know what that's what the black paint's for just paint over it and try again yeah. Oh, okay. So I like this. I like that. That's what I like. I like the black background. There's something um, stoic about them. And there's something that's really nice about all your paintings is that's why I brought up like your stylistic choices, because I 
wonder as people change and ebb and flow, you know, they, they change the way they do things or how they think. And I think that's a big part of you is that, is that style with that. Um, it's a current called? style with palette that, knife. Palette yeah. Knife. So I've only done it for ooh, the last two, three years, maybe. Oh, before really? Before that it was brushes. And before that, um, I didn't paint ever at all it was like little fucking pencil doodles you know and so I, I think you grow with it and it'll change and maybe at some point I go back into something else you know but it's part of learning picking up a new tool and being like fuck it does it do this does it do that you know and just I don't know try it out see what happens I don't know I just I, 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 the whisker. I just think it's great <laughs> I like the style of it I like um it gives it this like I don't life know. Texture. Yeah, I don't know. Texture. Like it, feels... it gives it this texture. That's right. I feel like there's more to it. It's not just a, a picture. It's not flat. <laughs> it's kind of like ah. Ah, you get my chaos of words. <laughs> ah, I appreciate Got that you me. understand where my head's at. A lot of times when I do these shows and I have these conversations with people, I. I have lofty goals of having these conversations, and I, I get having them, and and I lose my. I lose my vocabulary in a sense because there's so many different ways to describe things, art, people, places. And I see yeah. your art and it evokes something different though, that most other art doesn't to me. So like there's this <laughs> one really beautiful NFT that I'm like obsessed with that I posted this week and almost got uh, the platform for, for sexual exploitation. Um, and I think it's this really beautiful NFT. And when I look at something like that, it evokes a certain type of emotion to me. And when I look at, mm -hmm. when I see your art, it almost always evokes it. It's immediate, right? I know it's yours. Most people, when you look at yours, we know it's yours. People, there's not going to be another like Stop Invader it. Girl 2. Exactly. There's not going to be like another Invader Girl 2 that's going to come out and try to do a similar style to you. No one will believe it. It's because you've made this, at least in my eyes, this is how I know you. Like- <laughs> Hi, hi, like I'll grow and I'll, I'll accept all of your other art, but this is something different to me. I think you say that styles out there. I haven't seen it, not in the way that you do it, not in the honorable way, not in the way that you help people take their darkest emotions and heal from them and put them right in front of their face. So I think that's oh, really I mean, unique. I think maybe that's like, you know, maybe it's not just, because of being such an empath, you know, maybe I'm not the only one painting it, you know, maybe what's playing through my head is the story, you know, or that person's whatever, you know, like, I don't fucking know, you know, because, oh man, this goes into like even more deep shit. Um, Sorry, flow. I do this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so like flow to hit the state of flow, you know yoga you can sometimes hit that you know other meditation blah 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 so trying to fall into that while you're working and then being consciously aware that you're in that state and then also producing something it's it's kind of chaotic to attempt to even describe this I sound even more insane now but no you don't it's good please keep going <laughs> so it's like I can kind of find that little groove or that door, open it up, go in, paint, come back out. So it, it, maybe that's what makes it look different. Cause I'm not the only one that paints with a palette knife. There's a bunch of people that paint with palette knives, but there's, there is something different. You know, that's the unique, whatever, Invader Girl, the essence, you know, that's how that looks. Like you could line up six palette knife paintings and you're like, yeah, she did that. <laughs> But well, that's what I mean. It's, is it, do you think maybe it's not, the pal obviously it's not the palette knife. We know that, but is it, is it that because you have such a connection with, I would say humanity in a way, another human being that you're able to evoke something completely different than maybe those other palette knife artists are <laughs> down with other palette. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, down maybe. with the palettes. <laughs> maybe. I mean, who knows, you know, it's like, um, you know, I, I usually try to tell people don't death grip your tools when, you, when you're working on it, uh, just because you get a better sense of like flow, let let it do the work, you know, it's like cutting your fruit, you know, ah, you have to get in there, like, let the damn knife do its job, you know, like, just 
I don't know. So it's the same with art too. There's there's moments where it's like, hmm, am I even like really paying? It's just kind of like doing this thing and why are we, you know, I don't know. It just it happens. It just happens. It like you make it sound too easy. It's ridiculous. Oh my gosh. She's like, it just happens. I'm just good. I don't know, like 20 years of doing it at some point, you know. <laughs> fine. You just practice. I was it. really cocky. I apologize. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's it's perfectly normal. You're more than welcome to be cocky. 20 years of painting. Talk. <laughs> like you sound like, oh my God. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna go there with that. I'm gonna let that one go. So what's the, what's the next step? Like, what, what do I expect to see? Are you sticking with, because I've been seeing some of the paintings you've been putting out. They're very gladiator, very gladiator-esque type oh, deals. It's, it's hit, hit and miss. Like, so let's see, what do I got on the books? The gladiator ones was just like, Ooh, paint that. Awesome. Um, I've got a couple that I'm working on for Gala. Uh, so that's going to go all back to operator stuff. The next few are going to be all operator stuff. I mean, it's just kind of like you see something and you're just like, oh, you know, shiny. Shiny. <laughs> Is that a golden ass? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I have to paint it right now. Pretty much. <laughs> but I love that. I saw it. I saw it. The golden ass came to me in a thought. It's so oh, distressing. Wait, like- yeah, uh, I don't know. Just it's 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 really just whatever I kind of come up with, you know, the good idea fairy. Like I've got a little list going. Uh, right now, it's got like Peter Pan and operator. It's uh, where is I don't even know where my list is. It's hiding. Um, but there is a list, and we just write down good ideas and just kind of go from there and put it out there. Like, see what happens. Shit. Maybe tomorrow I paint a, a cat. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you do you. <laughs> It's going to be a cat with like fucking skull and a little teardrop, maybe some, I don't know, barbed wire. Yeah. Okay. We're going. Okay. I like, <laughs> I like the creativity. I'm not going to stifle the passion. I won't do it. What's, what's the place? <laughs> what's the, what's the best place for people when they want to purchase your art, kind of find out where you are, get in contact with you, have conversations with you. Mm, well you'd have to like talk to my people in order to get in touch with me no i'm kidding um have my people call so, your people yeah kind of dot. No. <laughs> totally kidding um so instagram is probably just the easiest simplest way to do that the link uh black canvas llc.com takes you right to the site everything that's available is going to be listed there if you don't see it there it's gone sorry um you want to commission or something message me email me uh, if I don't get your email, it's probably in the junk folder. So I apologize. I try to check that as quick as possible. <laughs> I don't know, oh, Instagram. Um, we, we just set up the LinkedIn page. So we're working on getting that up and running too. But yeah, that's kind of it. And if you can't get a hold of me, I don't know what to tell you. Sorry. No better people. <laughs> right? Am I right though? Or am I right? It's fine. You're you're obviously not in the in the click. Get out. Oh, oh, she said it. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, she my said door it. is open. My door is open. You know, her like, door I, is I open know. if you can find it. <laughs> well, I don't know if people like think that I I try to get all the messages. Um, Your text. audio. Oh, there you are. It totally died. <gasps> Shit. It's okay. I can hear you. It's fine. I can hear you. You're good. Um, but no, you you were saying this. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? This is, this is yes. awkward. No, it's only <laughs> awkward for you and no one else involved. Um, but I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, you're in my orbit. I'm glad I found out about you. I'm super. I'm super excited for your future and everybody that's really realizing how awesome your art is, how impactful and useful it is, and you're really helping people heal. And I think that's, what's so special about you. You genuinely care on a deep level. You deserve everything Uh, good coming to you. Don't (laughs) me. You right back. Yeah, that's right. I'm just just happy to help people. You know, like I'm here today because of a lot of awesome people. So that's, that's my life's work. I just keep putting it back out because hopefully then, you know, other people, 
people can benefit from that. I did. <laughs> Fantastic, Sarah. I can't thank you enough so much for uh, coming on and we will make sure to tag everything and push people in your direction. Otherwise, every, oh God, she just cleaned wave. Guys, you really need to watch this episode. Otherwise, we will talk to you, everyone else next week. Sarah, stick with me. See y'all later.